Now imagine in the future your self-driving car could be hacked by terrorists. Hi there, my name is Gerrit Heikoop and I'm here at the Future of Information and Communication Conference in Singapore talking to some of the authors with the highest reviewed papers. And in this episode I'm talking to Mark Weber from Germany and his paper is titled A Hybrid Anomaly Detection System for Electronic Control Units Fitting Replicator Neural Networks. And we'll dissect that bit by bit. Mark, good morning. Good morning. Now, let's start with the beginning. Why do we need an anomaly detection system in our electronic control units? Okay, so basically you gave the reason um, in your introduction. So there are two reasons. One is a security reason. So if there are hackers, if there are terrorists or somebody else who was, was trying to harm you, the car should be able to detect that by himself or by itself. So um, the first stage is to detect something and the second stage is to react on. And in our paper or in, in that paper from the current conference, we are targeting or we are focusing on detecting there's something going wrong. Um, and this something is not only related to the security part, but it's also re uh, related to the safety part because there's no safety without security. Um, however, for example, if we think about self-driving cars, um, we are not able to test and to verify everything, right? So they can, there can be um, new situations the car hasn't experienced before. And we kind of try to safeguard this, um, that as well. So if there's a situation and there's a free road or something and the car starts to accelerate very quickly without any intention, then this is maybe not due to an attacker, to a hacker, but just a, a malfunction of a car. This would also be an ana uh, anomaly. So there are the two reasons for that. All right. Now, you want to research this. What's the challenge in researching these detecting systems? Very good question. So um, I, I see two challenges. The first one is to what is an anomaly? So yeah, how to define what is normal and what's exactly, not. Exactly, exactly. This is the first one, and the second one is to bring that into the limiting computing resources into a car. These are the basically the two, the two challenges. Yeah, so you turn to replicator neural networks, and then specifically hybrid ones. I think for some of our viewers, we need to explore that a bit. What do you mean with that? Okay, so uh, let's start with the hybrid. Um, so our system targets not only machine learning, but it's kind of... Um, we are trying to reuse the existing knowledge of the car. And that means the car is built as a static system. It's not like the internet, which evolves day by day, but it's there. So that yeah. the manufacturer exactly knows how to build a car and what's in the car. And this pre-knowledge is kind of essential to anomaly detection because we know what's there. And if the car manufacturer says, well, I have specs of a car and it can go from zero to 250 kilometers an hour, um, it's unrealistic that the car, in some cases, travels 300 kilometers an hour. Exactly. And this is the, the hybrid we want to mention. So we, we observe the static part, which is defined by the manufacturer. Yeah. But on the other hand, there are situations which are within the specified behavior, but not normal. So kind of a uh, car is accelerating from zero to 100 kph in one second or yeah, so. Yeah, and it's not in a drag race. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of, in the specification, it's within the boundaries, but it's still physically not possible. And this is kind of where the machine learning hooks in. So not the replicator neural networks are hybrid, but the system setup itself is hybrid. All right. And um, what have you learned? Wha wha what are your conclusions? Uh, well, the conclusions are it's, it's possible to detect anomalies um, and as much as can be done should be specified by the car manufacturer. So the more input we have, the better it can be detected. The closer we can yeah, make the bubble, which is normal, that, that is the one, one thing um, we, we have learned. On the other hand, the car manufacturers, they don't want to spend too much money because specification is kind of a pain, yeah. uh, especially if you think about um, different derivatives of cars. So you have a car with that engine one and engine two and engine three and so on yeah. and so on. And each car has specific characteristics. And those specifics they don't want to specify because this would be a huge amount of time and money. And this is exactly the thing where machine learning can help us. Exactly. Now, what's the next step with this kind of research? Wh where can people step in and contribute to this line of thinking? Um, I think the most important part is how to react on. It's because our research is detecting, that is the first thing, yeah. uh, as, as a, a foundation. However, 
what happens if we detect an anomaly when driving 180 kilometers an hour on the autobahn? So to stop the car immediately is maybe not a good idea because then the car behind us is, cr is crashing into. Yeah. Um, so I think this is the major field of research. Of course, there are, from a technical point of view, a lot of points um, other researchers can extend our work. But from a, a global view, we should c take care about how to react. Yeah. yeah, all right. Very interesting. And it's clear that you are from Germany because driving 180 kilometers <laughs> on an autobahn <laughs> only happens in Germany. Well, Mark, thank you very much for being with us. And you, thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to get involved and if you're curious about all the innovations in the future of information and communication, click around on the SAA conference website or click around on our YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and be the first to know when a new video comes out. We are looking forward to see you at one of our future conferences.